And the readings will now be given by Fairley from Maryland. The Holy Bible, Psalms. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Genesis 37. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And it came to pass, when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty and there was no water in it. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content. Then there passed by Midianites merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites, for twenty pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. Genesis 50. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us, and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now therefore, fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. Matthew. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Mark. And when ye stand praying, forgive if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven Forgive your trespasses. Isaiah. That the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Colossians. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, 
Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Luke. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures and Prose Works by Mary Baker Eddy. Do you ask wisdom to be merciful and not to punish sin? Then ye ask amiss. Without punishment, sin would multiply. Jesus' prayer, forgive us our debts, specified also the terms of forgiveness. When forgiving the adulterous woman, he said, go and sin no more. We acknowledge God's forgiveness of sin in the destruction of sin and the spiritual understanding that casts out evil as unreal. But the belief in sin is punished so long as the belief lasts. God is love. More than this we cannot ask. Higher we cannot go. Farther we cannot go. To suppose that God forgives or punishes sin according as his mercy is sought or unsought is to misunderstand love and to make prayer the safety valve for wrongdoing. Prayer is not to be used as a confessional to cancel sin. Such an error would impede true religion. Sin is forgiven only as it is destroyed by Christ, truth, and life. If prayer nourishes the belief that sin is canceled and that man is made better merely by praying, prayer is an evil. He grows worse who continues in sin because he fancies himself forgiven. Vibrating like a pendulum between sin and the hope of forgiveness, selfishness and sensuality causing constant retrogression, our moral progress will be slow. Waking to Christ's demand, mortals experience suffering. This causes them, as even as drowning men, to make vigorous efforts to save themselves. And through Christ's precious love, these efforts are crowned with success. The law of life and truth is the law of Christ, destroying all sense of sin and death. It does more than forgive the false sense named sin, for it pursues and punishes it and will not let sin go until it is destroyed, until nothing is left to be forgiven to suffer or to be punished. Forgiven thus, sickness and sin have no relapse. God's law reaches and destroys evil by virtue of the allness of God. The destruction of sin is the divine method of pardon. Divine life destroys death. Truth destroys error. And love destroys hate. Being destroyed, sin needs no other form of forgiveness. Does not God's pardon destroying any one sin prophesy and involve the final destruction of all sin? If you have been badly wronged, forgive and forget. God will recompense this wrong and punish more severely than you could him who has striven to injure you. Never return evil for evil. And above all, do not fancy that you have been wronged when you have not been. My beloved brethren, if a member of the church is inclined to be uncharitable or could, to condemn his brother without cause, let him put his finger to his lips and forgive others as he would be forgiven. 
one's first lesson is to learn oneself. Having done this, one will naturally, through grace from God, forgive his brother and love his enemies. Divine love eventually causes mortals to turn away from the open sepulchres of sin and look no more into them as realities. It calls loudly on them to bury the dead out of sight, to forgive and forget whatever is unlike the risen immortal love, and to shut out all opposite sins. Christ enjoins it upon man to help those who know not what he is doing in their behalf and therefore curse him and joins taking them by the hand and leading them, if possible, to Christ by loving words and deeds. Charity thus serves as admonition and instruction and works out the purposes of love. The Christian scientist loves man more because he loves God most. He understands this principle love. Who is sufficient for these things? Who remembers that patience, forgiveness, abiding faith, and affection are the symptoms by which our Father indicates the different stages of man's recovery from sin and his entrance into science? More love is the great need of mankind. A pure affection, concentric, forgetting self, forgiving wrongs and forestalling them, should swell the lyre of human love. The last act of the tragedy on Calvary rent the veil of matter and unveiled love's great legacy to mortals. Love forgiving its enemies. This grand act crowned and still crowns Christianity. It manumits mortals. It translates love. It gives to suffering inspiration, to patience, experience, to experience hope, to hope, faith to faith, understanding, and to understanding, love, triumphant. <laughs>